Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Katrina Carcasis, Professor of Sexuality, Women and Gender Studies at Amherst College in the United States, and also a Senior Research Fellow with the Global Health Justice Partnership at Yale University, also in the US. What is testosterone? Testosterone is a hormone among many steroid hormones that are in the body that are present in all people that both contribute to sex development and secondary sex traits, but are also critical for the body's well-being and actually are necessary for a broad range of organs in the body so that it's not only tissues like muscle that have receptors, but also uh, vital organs in the body. What does testosterone do? Part of what makes it so complicated to talk about testosterone is that everyone thinks that they know what it does, right? That there's a lot of broad common sense knowledge about the hormone that stretches back a hundred years. The problem is actually that that knowledge is often um, partial, incorrect, uh, outdated, you know, whatever it might be. In terms of what it does, um, that's actually a hard question to answer because it does many things and in fact one of the largest gaps I would say in the literature is actually what it does to female-bodied people um, in part because of its identity uh, for a very long time and still up until now as a male sex hormone there was sort of this well what could it possibly do in female-bodied people and the answer is quite a bit and yet that literature is really uh, sort of nascent. Uh, the other piece that's nascent actually is the receptor part, so that a lot of people think that it really only matters what your testosterone level is, but it's really kind of a lock and a key type of situation. So the testosterone that's in your body, of which there are several forms, actually need receptors to attach to in order to have any active function. And so those receptors are throughout the body and what's really cool about them is that they're variable uh, so that the receptors that you have in one part of your body may be quite different and by different I mean different in sort of receptivity strength than they might be in another part of your body. So it's a really wide-ranging, fascinating hormone that's actually responsible for a great deal more than its popular identity would lead us to know or understand. Who has testosterone in their bodies? Everyone has testosterone, and there are a couple of instances where um, people either for medical or other reasons have very low levels. And there's a couple of cases or kinds of instances where um, people might have typical levels or higher than typical levels, but their tissues aren't responsive to it, right? So that comes back to the same point that it's not just the level, it's the level and then the degree of responsivity in the tissues. Without that responsivity, doesn't really matter what level you have because it can't do anything in the body. What are some of the greatest misconceptions about testosterone? The number one misconception is that it is a male sex hormone. And that's problematic for two reasons. Male is problematic because it's in all people. Sex hormone is problematic because it's responsible for far more than um, sex traits, uh, you know, development of secondary sex characteristics and other things. So that is definitely number one. And I would say that that misconception is at the root of a lot of the problems I see around discussions of testosterone or reliance on testosterone for particular policies or other things. Um, another one is all of the things, which is a consequence of that framing, frankly, all of the things that are commonly associated with testosterone, but that are actually not borne out by what we know about it. And I would say the primary one is probably its association with aggression so that there's still a widespread belief that the higher your testosterone level, the more aggressive you are, because people, um, men tend to have higher levels. This is often thought of as a reason why there's greater tendency among men uh, for aggression than there is, for example, for women. But unfortunately, um, 
men aren't let off the hook uh, by their higher than typical testosterone levels because even testosterone researchers themselves who have studied this relationship have said, you know, as far back as 20 to 30 years ago that there was an incredibly weak relationship between testosterone and aggression. When we talk about testosterone, you can't actually make blanket statements. You you need to be fairly specific when you're looking at studies about, well, who is the population? What were the outcome variables? And based on that, what can you actually say about this hormone? And uh, very often it's far more narrow than the kinds of claims that people make about it. Is there a normal or optimal level of testosterone for men, for women, or for those who are non-binary? I think there's an optimal level of testosterone for every person. And that's precisely um, what your body produces and does because your body adjusts to its own normative level. So if we leave out the kind of rare exceptions, definitely not aging men, we have to leave that out because that's kind of a, a complicated area that would require some unpacking. But if we leave out that and we leave out illness, then each body adjusts to its own particular level because testosterone doesn't operate in isolation. It's an incredibly dynamic hormone so that for any individual person, it changes time of day, time of month, time of year, time of life. It changes in response to social situations and cues. So the optimal level is really one in which your body's um, organs and tissues have what you need, but it, you can't actually say that there's sort of an ideal level. It kind of doesn't work like cholesterol, for example, where you say, okay, it's better overall if you have a level that's below this threshold. For testosterone, there's such a wide range among people. And for for the most part, those ranges are absolutely fine and don't have health implications, um, except when you hit very particular circumstances. Where can I learn more about testosterone? If you're interested in digging into more of what I am talking about, feel free to visit my website at katrinacarcasis.com and also dig into my most recent co-authored book, Testosterone and Unauthorized Biography. Thank you.